Good morning. Good morning. So excited to be able to share with you one more time. God is good. Um, wanted to share something out of Colossians chapter 3 on this morning. Let's pray. Lord God, we just come to you in your matchless and your mighty name. I thank you, O oh God, for Jesus and the blood that he shed for us at Calvary. We thank you for the power of the resurrection and the sacrifice at the cross reminds us of. We thank you, God, that through your son, through his blood, through his finished work, that we are new creatures in you. And Lord God, I just pray that as I share on this morning, I pray that you would speak through me. I pray that it will minister to whoever God may hear this, may stumble upon it, may share it, oh God, to remind us of who we are and whose we are and where our eyes should be set. And I give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know that there's so much going on in the United States right now. I know there's so much going on, so much injustice. Um, and I try to tread carefully because it's not just African Americans who are suffering. There are so many people, so many different people, gender, race, that are struggling, that are suffering, that are hurting. Praise the Lord. It's also injustice. Um, mental illness is increasing. People are losing their jobs. Hallelujah. God has just been leading my husband and me to go to restaurants and just bless the service with as much as he's blessed us with. Praise the Lord to just increase um, their tips. One lady shared with us on Sunday. She had been there for most of the day and it only made $24 in tips. It was so bad that her mom had told her, just come home. I'll just help you out until things get better. But praise God, we were on assignment and we were able to bless her. And she said, oh no, I can't take this. And I said to her, yes, you can. This is our assignment. So I just want us um, to just go to the scripture for a minute. If you would go with me to Colossians chapter three, and I just want to read a few um, verses beginning at verse one. Paul says to the church at Colossae, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. People of God, if we're not careful, we're going to miss God fighting, arguing, complaining about what's going on in our nation. It's bad. It's awful. But this is not our home. Let's just start there. This is not our home. And every time something ugly happens, that ought to be more motivation for us to say, God, I'm drawing closer. I'm getting closer. I'm laying aside every weight, every sin, every distraction. This world is falling apart. And I know that you are my only hope. So Paul said, since we have been changed, since we are new, since we've been transformed, we need to set our sights on the realities of heaven. Why argue about all of the things that are going on? Why argue about sinners being sinners? Why get upset about the unsaved being unsaved? Oh, God, help us. We had a Sunday school lesson, Isaiah 59, where God was using Isaiah to say that there was no justice in Israel at all. There was none. And that there would be no justice until the, the, the God of righteousness came. And we know that's Jesus the Christ. And we also know that when Jesus came, he came to be the savior. He's not the reigning king on the earth yet. We know that's still to come. So why do we keep Falling out, I personally think, is a distraction of the enemy. So we'll forget what we're really called to do. We're called to be the light in the darkness. We're called to be the salt of the earth. We're called to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. We're not called to argue and fight about Republicans or Democrats or independents or the governors or the mayors or the president. That's not what we're called to do. We're to set our sights on heavenly things. Paul said, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. If there's injustice, what if we as believers got together and prayed and fasted together and called out to God, to the God of justice, to the God that, that can fix it? He's the only one. 
Oh God, he's the only one. Paul said in verse three, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. My real life. You don't have to like the color of my skin and you don't have to accept my gender or whatever. It has nothing to do with the fact that I am hidden in Christ Jesus. I am accepted in the beloved. If you know him as your savior, whether you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, if you know Jesus as your savior, you are accepted in the beloved. You are belong to him. He is in control of everything. You are now the Lord's responsibility and he's got you. He's going to take care of his own. Jesus has never failed his children. Even when we were stubborn and disobedient and hard-headed or whatever, and he may have to discipline us, he may have to spank us, but what he never does is forsakes us. And so therefore, it doesn't matter. Does it get scary? Yes. But the scariest thing is when we take our eyes off of Jesus and we begin to rely on the faithfulness, the strength, or the justice of man, man has no justice. Even for those who say we're loving people, we cannot love outside of Jesus Christ. So then look what he says in verse four. And when Christ, who is your life, when Christ, who is my life, if you are a believer, when Christ, who is your life, when he is revealed to the whole world, we will share in his glory. That's our hope, people. Our hope is not justice down here. Well, it shouldn't be. Come on, y'all. It shouldn't be. Because, I mean, if we were really honest, and I, I'm not trying to upset anybody, but white people are shooting up black folks. And it's wrong. I'm here to tell you right now, a whole lot of black people have done me wrong. More than white people have done me wrong. And so what that says to me is it's a heart issue. And we know if any man be in Christ, he's new. The old has gone. We got, take on the seed, the righteousness of God, and that bitterness and that hatred that was in our heart. If we're genuinely converted, I know people are claiming to be saved, but genuine converts don't hate. Genuine converts don't murder. They don't. They don't lie. They don't cheat. They don't steal. They don't practice those things. We may stumble or fall here or there, but that's not our lifestyle. A lifestyle of hatred. We remember that everyone is created in the image of God. Praise the Lord. And so I just want to just remind us, look at what it says. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Put them to death. Bitterness, pride, grief, strife, distrust, hatred, anger, <laughs> self-centeredness. It says put it aside. All these things are earthly. Having to have the things of this world, you know. I have a truck and I love my truck. I do. I love it and I thank God for it. But every once in a while, and I know my truck is old. It has no USB ports. <laughs> That's how you know you have an old vehicle. It has no USB ports. None at all. Praise the Lord. But you know what? When I get in that truck, it cranks up. And when I have to get it fixed, God has blessed us that we're able to get it fixed without going into debt. Hallelujah. My insurance is not high. I don't have a car note. And so I was driving this morning to the park to go for my walk. And I said, Lord, bless her to keep working. Bless her to keep working because things are bad. The economy is bad and God gives us wisdom. This is not the time to go get in more debt if you don't have to. Now, if something happens that you have to do it. If something happens that it breaks down and God decides not to provide a way to get it fixed, I believe he'll provide the way to either buy another vehicle, give us another vehicle, or make the car. No, I don't know what he's going to do, but I do know this is not the time to be trying to hoard and collect and consume I know that. So look what it says. So I have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. Hello? Is it possible that what we're seeing all over the world is two things? The anger of God is coming. Because we're at the end of times. Is it possible that the Bible is right? I've 
think the Bible is right. So he says, you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger and rage and malicious behavior and slander and dirty language. Now I want to talk about this. The more we talk about the injustice, look at what they did. Look what they did. I'm telling you right now, we are not praying. We're not seeking God. And the enemy is just riding on this. I'm telling you, I think I've shared this before. I have family members who now are starting to hate white people. That's not God. And they're naming the name of Christ. That is not God. So when we see these things, we run to God. Tell God it hurts. Tell God you're frustrated. Ask God how you can be a part of the solution. But know this, you never, ever, ever take your eyes off of God. He must be first. But now is the time. Don't lie to each other for you stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds and put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. That's my challenge as I close. Let's be renewed. People of God. If you name the name of Christ, let's stop. Let's stop being the conversations that don't glorify God. Let's stop sounding like the world. Let's remember our mind and our hearts, our eyes are supposed to be looking up. Because Jesus is soon to come. He's soon to come. And we want to be able to stand before him and hear him say, well done. This world is being the world. So let us as believers be believers. Let's put aside all of the things that don't glorify God. Stay away from the conversations that aren't going to glorify God. Even if you're talking about injustice, bring them back to Jesus. Bring them back to Jesus. Andrew Kraut sang a song many years ago. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. He's the answer. He's the answer. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Let go of the world and all of the pain and everything that comes with it. God knows how to shelter us, regardless of what color you are, regardless of your economic status, regardless of your gender. God knows how to shelter and take care of those that belong to him. And if he should call you home, Paul said, that's the better place to be. And so I pray for all of us in the name of Jesus. God, forgive us for continuing to drink from the cup of this world, even though we have been converted. Forgive us for being part of the anger and the slander and the gossiping and the complaining and everything else. God, forgive us for being consumers. Forgive us for being concerned about our food and our clothes and our shelter, God, and all those things that you promised you would take care of. Lord, I pray for everyone that will hear this. I pray this once again, that regardless of where it may find them, that it will remind them that they belong to you and you never turn your back on your children. Even now, God, you see and you know. And so I pray, heal the hurting. Deliver those that are in bondage. Set the captives free, Jesus, by your mighty power. And God, set our hearts to love you and you alone. In the name of Jesus, that the enemy will find no place and nothing in us that belongs to him. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Be blessed and go with God. Amen.